All right, give it up for Austin Reeves. So you're really good now. <laughs> I play with a lot of really good players. Oh, come on. I got 30 minutes to fill. You can't be going like that on me. Uh, this is really cool. And, you know, Austin's agents reached out to me a while back. We got connected and they were like, hey, would you want to have him on? I'm like, look, I think this is an incredible story. Your story, this small town, you're on the Lakers. And at that point, we don't really know where it's going. And now here we are more than a year later, man. So this is this is an incredible run. What's that been like from the time, you know, two years into the league, now going to your third year? What's that been like for you? Oh, it's been crazy. Um, you know, for the longest time, didn't know if I would get to this point, um, but just put my head down at work. So these past two years, it's been, you know, really rewarding. And I've got to sit back and really appreciate, you know, kind of what I've done in these two years, obviously not, you know, satisfied with, you know, anything you want to win a championship and all that. But, you know, just super proud of myself and, um, you know, like the trajectory of, you know, how it's going. What did you learn? Like, I always ask anybody like this because, look, when you're a lottery pick, I know what the answer is, right? And I love when guys give me the honest answers, and, and you've done that with me in the past. But when it's like the battle of am I actually this good to then crossing over into like, yeah, I am this good. Was there a moment for you? Uh, no, I always has self-belief. Um, and all I just knew I needed an opportunity to you know go prove that. Um, like you said, from a super small town, you know, I didn't play you. I played baseball. So I didn't, you know, no AAU basketball play one year. My last year I could play. Other than that, I played, you know, baseball, like I said, and everybody thought I was going to go play baseball. Uh, but just you know, didn't were you really... supposed to play baseball at Oklahoma? Uh, no, no, no. I stopped probably when I was like 13. Oh, yeah, that'd uh, be 14. weird. So, yeah, I quit that early. But uh, like I said, I played one year AAU. Uh, didn't have many offers, um, you know, committed to Wichita State and then bought into my role and my role was just catch and shoot and I had to you know leave to go you know expand that and then undrafted all that but um I think the first time I stepped on the floor with like Bron and AD um just going up and down with them I was like okay I can you know I can I belong here and I can really you know make my print here what's the first thing LeBron said to you that made you feel accepted uh, I didn't think it was really words. It was more so just actions like passing he, to you. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> for sure. I mean, he, you know, even going back to um, I think when it really kicked in was game one of the Memphis series. Um, I think D'Lo got a rebound, outletted it to Bron and I was running the court because, you know, obviously Bron's got it and he stopped and was like, no, I'll come back and get it. And like my mind just completely shut off but the only thing i could think of was like i can't make him look stupid like i gotta ha get something good if it's a shot for myself uh ended up hitting a three i went like on a 7-0 run myself and but it was like at that moment i was like okay like he's got that trust in me ad as well and you know that that was the main one you're living in manhattan beach now yeah I, i'm not gonna give out yeah. the address <laughs> uh do you think LeBron will ever visit you once? <laughs> probably not. No, probably not. I'm still waiting on the invite to Taco Tuesday. Are you serious? Yeah, no, see, I got to get that one. You're the third best player now. Well, you could, you could argue that. All right. At least yeah. you gave yourself that a little bit. I'm not going to make you rank them all. I'm like, all right, rank the entire Lakers 1 through 12. Uh, but I look, I, I think you know that, you know, whatever – you know, I'm not a reporter and that stuff, but, you know, doing it long enough and talking to enough people, I remember how cool I thought it was and how glad, how glad I felt for you after you and I had connected to be like, I heard LeBron really likes him. Like, he really likes him. And, you know, I think in the beginning of last year, it may have just been like, I trust him way more than everything else that we're doing. Uh, and I know you said it's actions, it's not words, it's not those things, but, I mean, there's, there's something to that when you think of your age and who he is in the game. And the first time you were probably even aware, you're, you're under 10. Uh, you know, I know you get over it. He's your teammate. You're third year in. You're trying to do stuff. But I imagine your friends are more annoying about it than I'm being in this interview right now. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I remember <laughs> um, it was my first year when I was back home. Uh, Brian had posted something on his Instagram story, and I had, you know, reacted to it or sent something back. And I was just talking about it casually. And one of my friends looked at me and was like, do you not – 
do not understand like what you're talking about. And I was like, no, what do you, what do you mean? He was like, you could pick up the phone and call LeBron right now. And he would answer. He was like, that's literally insane. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, you know, you kind of have to, you know, for me, he's the greatest player ever. Um, you know, I wouldn't even want you to say it was Jordan just for your own safety. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I mean, I was a big Kobe fan. Um, so like for a long time, like I wasn't the biggest Bron fan and like me and him have a conversation about it. Uh, cause there was a post that come out, uh, middle of last year when we were in new Orleans and it was, a, a Facebook post that I posted from 2012. And it was like, uh, when I need some sleep, I put my phone to LeBron mode, no rings or something. And I was just like, shit, I'm gonna get in trouble for this one. Uh, so I remember we were in the locker room in New Orleans. Dude, every one of you guys just fucked that up. Like yeah. every draft class on, everybody immediately digs in to see who you've read. For sure. But anyway. No doubt. That's so, actually not the worst tweet, though. No. So I give you a lot of credit for the creativity. But I remember we were in New Orleans, and I, <laughs> Sports Center posted it on Instagram, and I just pulled up my phone, and I the first thing I seen, and I was just like, shit. <laughs> so... I was like, all right, I got to I gotta man up. Like, I just got to call him over here and tell him. So I was like, Brian, come here, man. And he walks over. He's like, what's up? I was like, look, I was a huge Kobe fan. I was shitting on you back in 2012. <laughs> and I read what I posted. He just started laughing. Uh, he ended up making, you know, a comment about it in the media uh, after I did the too small to Pat Bev. Um, you know, uh, just about me having his back, even though I was a Kobe fan. So. You know, shout out to him for, um, you know, not you know, taking that any type of way. And aside on the too small, has anyone big actually done it to somebody small? <laughs> Katie did it to me last night, so. <laughs> yeah. I didn't watch the preseason game. It was NFL. Sorry. I know you lost. We're not going to worry about the score. Uh, I'm going to go there because, you know, we've got time. Would your friends had been more impressed if LeBron picked up or Taylor Swift? <laughs> what was that like? What was that that rodeo like there for that rumor mill for you for a couple of weeks? It was it was crazy, and obviously from a small town of like eleven hundred people, everybody knows everybody, so um, they know me. I imagine and, she's popular in your hometown. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah. But they the crazy part <laughs> was is they said uh, that they seen us in a bar in Arkansas. One, I don't go out. Like I, you don't I, go out. No, There's I one. I was gonna try to get you a membership yeah. here, and your agent was like, "Don't even bother." Yeah, no. So I was I like, "Okay, no out. problem." All right. So no, I mean, I'm interrupting you a bit here, but like the idea that she would then be out with you, who doesn't go out, and you'd pick your town in Arkansas, maybe that. I mean, sweet home Alabama. I've seen it. You know. <laughs> no, this this was the furthest thing from the truth. Uh, they actually, someone told me the other day that it was a. Uh, you know, an employee from the Clippers. On so this is true. Account. I don't know if it's true or not. That's just what so I heard. So the theory is, is that it's a Clippers employer uh, employee who used a burner account just to mess with you that started this whole thing. That's what I heard. So the, the follow-up is, are you the biggest Travis Kelsey fan or the, the biggest hater? I actually don't really watch that much football, but, <laughs> uh, you know, Travis is elite. Um, I don't have no problem with him. And... <laughs> I wish them nothing but the best. I'm not going to ask you to answer the question, but I can't help it if I were a Laker in my 20s and the rumor was out there that wasn't true. There isn't just a yo question mark DM at some point. No, absolutely not. All right. Well, I know you're just getting it all out there. Let's talk more about your game, though, because you said something I love. And anybody that's ever played any basketball at any level understands the difference between all the shit you practice in the driveway and then in practice in high school, and then the stuff you're actually comfortable with doing again. And for your the whole reason you were undrafted is that it was almost as if you weren't trusted. You weren't trusted to do all these other things. To see you develop this part of your game where you're putting it on the deck and you're resetting yourself and keeping that dribble going, like that to me is the biggest thing about scoring the wing in this league is that there's a lot of guys that kind of like one, maybe two dribble. The guys are going to hit shots. But you have become a complete attacker off the dribble after not having that be part of your. <laughs> Everybody hates the Astros. Yeah, they are cheaters. I'm gonna be honest. I thought, I thought there was like a roof falling in for a second. You know what? Seriously, you guys have been such an awesome crowd and so quiet the whole time. I like. I don't even. Uh, for sure. 
I thank you. Give yourself a round of applause for that one. Um, I was rambling about how good you are there for a bit, but seriously, the the ability to be allowed to show that that doesn't happen. Like when you start in the league and you don't have it right away, like a lot of coaches would just be like, "We don't trust you to do anything off the dribble," and that is why I think you become this good. Yeah, I mean, from you know even high school, well, that's kind of what I did. Like I was a point guard my whole life, and then went to college and had to buy into a role. Um, for our team to be successful, and that's what I wanted to do. Uh, I wanted to win, and that's what they asked me to do. So, you know, just getting to that, um, you know, my first year, you know, here, it was how can I get on the court? And, you know, we had a bunch of older guys that didn't want to really play defense, to be honest, and um, <laughs> that's how I got my foot in the door um, right. was to, you know, compete every night uh, on the defensive end and then, just make open shots, but just being able to build off that. Um, me and Phil Handy have a really good relationship and we're in the gym a lot. Um, just trying to expand my game. And, you know, I think, you know, one thing about, you know, everybody on our team and organization, like if they see you in the gym uh, working on your game, then they're not going to, you know, handcuff you to only doing one thing. Has Magic taken credit for you yet? <laughs> I don't think so. I'm going to I'm going to say February. <laughs> February is my over under. How did how did you guys do it? I mean, I know the roster turnover, I know all the trades, we all know understand the transactions. Um you weren't as bad as you were at the beginning of the year. But what was that emotional journey like for a team that has big expectations, has the biggest star, you know, like LeBron doesn't expect to be what 1 and 9 to start the year. What was it like to go from that to then looking like a real challenge to the West? Yeah, I think it was just for the first, you know, three quarters of the season before the trade deadline, it was a mental grind. Um, just every day trying to figure out what we could do to be better. And, you know, we just couldn't ever figure that out. And then obviously, uh, Rob made some really good moves to the trade deadline, brought in, you know, a lot of guys that uh, were complimentary guys, um, you know, Vando, Bees, D-Lo, um, and kind of just everything fit better. And from then on out, you know, we built really good chemistry on and off the court. Uh, we were always hanging out, you know, playing cards. Me and D'Lo play a lot of golf together. And, um, you know, it's just built from there. And then now having that same core that went to the Western Conference Finals and then adding guys like Gabe and Tori and, um, and I know I'm missing some, but a lot of guys that, you know, you can piece um, together that's going to make us better, you know, obviously – uh, defensively, but shooting the ball as well because we didn't shoot it well last year. That was our main problem. And, um, you know, really happy with what we got and feel like we have a really good chance. I can't figure out whose side I'm taking yet in the Denver Laker thing because you guys talked about each other now for like two straight months. And like, there's definitely headlines where I laughed. It was like, yeah, we've been paying attention to what they're saying and we've been attention to like, all right. But it was a closer series than the way it played out. I mean, you can look back historically, years from now, you'd be like, oh, they got worked. And it's like, well, no, it was actually pretty competitive. What's different about this year if you face them again in the playoffs? Uh, I think we just shoot the ball better. Um, last year, I know, you know, definitely in the Memphis series, even though we won, I was looking at, you know, stats and box scores and stuff through like the first like four or five games and i think it was the first four and we were up three one and we had only shot over 30 percent from three in one of those games and we were up three one so it's just like if you could you know shoot the ball better we would win those games you know um by 15 to 20 and um i feel like you know losing bruce brown kind of hurt them uh he was a plug and play guy that you know understood his role and played the right way and um, like I said, with the guys that we brought in, I feel like it kind of fills the voids that we had last year. And we have this whole time to, you know, build on what we built last year and really build a foundation. I'm really happy for you, man. Um, and I hope you start getting some calls because you get absolutely bulldozed and it's always on you. I, I think after the world, get, the world games, I'm serious. I'm not just saying it because you're my guy. You know, I'm stern, but I'm fair. I think you get run over and then you're on the ground and the guys point at you. I think it's going to change with what you just did with team USA. I think that everybody would disagree with you. I feel like they think well, I get calls. I, <laughs> I do think you started flopping a little bit more towards the end, but I think it was a counter to the stuff that you had to do. No, I just got to show them that I do get fouled. 
I'm on your side on this one. I'm on your side. But I did text your agent. I was like, oh, I see what he's doing now. He's not getting enough calls. So now he's going to be like, all right, now I have to emphasize it more. Just don't go full hardened. All right? You go half hardened. (laughs) You never want to go full hardened. All right. Uh, You're the man. I can't wait to see you this season. Thanks so much for doing this. This is huge. The guy was golfing all day and made sure he stopped by.